Professor Patrick Sharkey, thank you so much for speaking with us. It's great to be here. You know, a lot of people are writing about gun violence right now. And a lot of people are writing about police violence right now. I want to dig into each of these crises separately, but are they intrinsically connected in your view? I think they are connected. And this goes all the way back to the late 1960s when, when the United States tried a model of dealing with all the challenges that come bundled up when you have extreme urban inequality. We went through a decade where we tried you know, what Johnson called the war on poverty. And we, we started to make investments in communities. And then we abandoned that approach. Uh, and we, we as a nation took a different approach. And our approach consisted of, of two driving goals. Uh, and I lay this out in my book, but one is to leave cities on their own, uh, disinvest, extract resources from communities, ignore the challenges that have become more and more visible in central cities uh, over the last uh, century, over the last 60 or 70 years. And secondly, invest in a model driven by the goal of punishment. So invest heavily in the prison system, uh, invest heavily in, in law enforcement, and really start to rely on law enforcement to respond to all the challenges that come bundled when you have extreme urban inequality. So that model of abandonment and punishment has been largely intact in the decades since. And I think what we're seeing, the, the police violence that has become so visible has been happening for a very long time. We just didn't have cell phone cameras recording it. Uh, so when, as the whole nation has seen what's been going on in low-income communities of color for, for decades, there's less and less tolerance. There's less and less uh, acceptance uh, that this is how our fellow citizens should be treated. Well, you know, it's undeniable that we are experiencing a spasm of gun violence. I mean, there have been, a, as, I, as I last checked before our conversation minutes ago, there have been 143 mass shootings since the beginning of the year. Do you think that we are seeing more brutality by police, or is it just that the rest of the country, outside of the people directly experiencing it, are seeing it now? Yeah, I think the latter. So police violence has been extremely consistent over over time. Uh, and, and this goes back even to a couple of decades ago when, when the number of people killed by police has, has remained at a, at a very similar level uh, over time, even as the overall level of violence fell from the 1990s all the way through 2014. The level of police violence from the data sources we have looks like it was remarkably stable. Uh, and so what is interesting is that even after all the attention, even after the emergence of the Black Lives Matter movement, even after widespread protests across the country, that level of police violence hasn't budged. Uh, so the police kill about a thousand people each year. Uh, and even in the past six or seven years, as this has just gotten extraordinary attention and scrutiny, uh, the number of people killed by law enforcement each year hasn't changed much. So that tells you something about uh, this institution and the stability uh, of, of the way that police departments uh, operate across the country.